Number 4. Ferdinand Magellan, and many people afterwards, circumnavigated the Earth. That means he left headed west, continued going west, and came back to where he started, still going west. Actually, Magellan was dead, but one of his ships, led by Juan Sebastián Elcano, finished the journey. Yeah, this is one that comes up a lot. Oh, you know, people have circumnavigated the world going east or west. Well, so what? <laughs> That's if, if north is your center on a disk, I mean, you're, you're navigating the same way either way. So if, let's say you're on a ball and you want to go east. Well, you keep, this, you keep the compass uh, heading north 90 degrees off to your left and you start walking. If you want to go west, you keep it 90 degrees off to your right and you keep walking. You're using the north to determine what is east and west. Well, same thing on a circle. If you're, you want to go east, well, you, you do the exact same thing on a circle as you would on a ball. Exact same thing. You know, keep north 90 degrees off to your left, start walking. Keep north 90 degrees off to your right, start walking west. You're just going in a circle like a record player. Circumnavigation on a circle is exactly the same as circumnavigation on a ball. Now, the argument is always east to west. The interesting argument would be to go exactly pole to pole. Go north to south, back up to north again. No one's ever done that. And as I was wrapping this video up, I saw that uh, Jaron had actually done a video on this same topic a while back called No North-South Circumnavigation Means Earth is Flat. And in his video, he was giving a lot of information about some of the early explorers that went down to try to circumnavigate Antarctica and, um, and describing things that actually are, are covered in the book uh, Zetetic Astronomy regarding the ridiculous amounts of miles that they logged just trying to go around the ice wall, for instance. Now when you look at the logbooks of Captain Cook, uh, his logbook for his second journey was also 60,000 plus miles. You could look at the British Challenger expedition in the 1800s. That was also over 60,000 miles. So we should start being able to recognize a pattern here that obviously when we circumnavigate south of the equator, we are logging way too many miles. Remember that they're at the bottom of the globe. So if the equator is 25,000 miles, how are Captain Cook, Magellan, and others doing 50 to 65,000 miles, which is more than double? And of course, the key here is the circumnavigation. But not east-west. Let's look at north-south. So on a globe, we know how easy it would be to simply do a north-south circumnavigation going over the, both poles. It should be as easy as going east-west. So we either will have a ton of north-south circumnavigations or we will have a few weird stories and trips and maybe some failed attempts because on a flat earth map, north-south circumnavigation is impossible. So again, if we live on a globe, we should be seeing a lot of north-south navigations, circumnavigations, and if we live on a flat earth, we would see a lot of things like this picture shows. Imagine you start uh, at that white dot there somewhere on the east coast of the United States and travel down to the tip of South America. You would then travel from there out to wherever the 90 degree marker was and you'd have to turn around and come back. You see that line coming right back to the Mexico area and then up to the North Pole and then ending back where you started. All right, so should we expect to see no claims for north-south navigation? Well, remember, it is a deception. So we're gonna have to dig a bit deeper they don't just hand you the truth. They are happy to teach you lies in public schools and show you propaganda and TV and newspapers. But for truth, we're going to have to actually step out of our comfort zone. So let's look at some recent claims. First, we have the Guinness record holder and the Guinness greatest living explorer, Sir Ranulf Fiennes. He goes by the name of Ran. Uh, one of the things he did was a three-year trip to circumnavigate the Earth north-south and are we dealing with uh, some just regular guy? Or are we dealing with Sur Ranulf Twistleton Wegzara Fiennes, the third baronet OBE? He was in the British Army for eight years. He inherited his father's baronetcy, whatever the hell that means. Some ridiculous nonsense, I'm sure. He's also cousins to Queen Elizabeth. So you don't have to look too far to see what kind of guy we are dealing with here. And a recent Telegraph article tells us that uh, Sir Ranulf 
was in court recently because he was accused by Natalie Harrison of faking injuries to make his expeditions seem more risky and exciting. And Natalie, she actually got hurt the second time she fell into a crevice on purpose. And you see him here with a ladder. I don't know who's carrying that for him while he's on these little journeys, but... Oh, by the way, since Harrison agreed to go along with the two fake stunts, she got zero. In fact, she was ordered to pay Sir Ranulf fakes a lot $50,000 to pay for his lawyer fees because the judge actually said that it was her choice to go ahead and agree with his idea of faking accidents. He is, of course, a Freemason, a member of the Belvedere Lodge, number 503. Of course, it runs in the family. But now let's take a look at this 1979 to 1982 Transglobe Expedition, the North-South Pole Circumnavigation. Yeah, all right. No one has ever done that! No one has ever done that in the history of Dota! So let's take a look if there's any uh, discrepancies that might lead us to believe that maybe this is some, I don't know, horseshit. It looks like uh, 52,000 miles, it says here, in total was covered during this transglobe expedition. Again, north-south navigation, 25,000 mile circumference, yet 52,000 mile trip. And we can note that it says it was such a huge challenge, no one has ever repeated the route. So now let's look at the Guinness Book of Fakery. According to this, we've got 35,000 miles. Okay, well, that's a little different. And this is the Guinness Book of World Records page. Uh, this is the transglobe ship that actually he used to travel up and down the globe, I guess. They also had an interesting uh, apparatus here. This is the transglobe expedition, the plane. So even though they're supposed to be doing surf surface navigation, who knows what they actually did. Uh, let's see here. This is the actual homepage for Sir Rand, the expedition. Oh, now it's a 100,000-mile route. You lie to me. You make an excuse. So they've now jumped from 35 to 52 to 100,000 miles, all talking about the exact same trip. I mean, the question is, how can you be off by 70,000 miles? That's like three times around the globe. Can we not figure out how many miles we went on a trip? It's not that hard. Oh, boy. Here we have another page that also claims that it was 100,000 miles, which is uh, just ridiculous. I, I, why would it ever take somebody four times the distance of the circumference of the Earth to go the circumference of the Earth? I mean, did he forget his car keys and have to go back home? He was at the North Pole. He had to go all the way to the South Pole, then come all the way back and then do that twice. Doesn't make any sense. I, I, I can't take it. So now we're looking at a little PDF flyer they had from around that time that says around the world, the long hard way, which if it's 25,000 miles and you're going 100,000 miles, then you definitely went the long hard way. And just reading in here, you'll see that there's all kinds of things going on. People are dropping off snowmobiles, picking up food, taking planes over here, boats over here. There's people all over the place. Whole thing is a disaster. Oh, did I mention it's also a lie? One interesting thing I did find in this article that it says that there are only five pages in Rand's book about the time that he was at the South Pole, and there are no photos. So whenever you're doing a cross-Antarctica expedition where you have to go through the South Pole, it's definitely good to take no pictures at the South Pole. That's the way to verify exactly what you say you did. Speaking of Antarctica, there was another interesting thing I found that uh, when you apply to go down there for whatever reason, take pictures, to go work as a scientist or whatever, you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. If you guys know what that's like, it's like somebody's giving you secrets about a certain product or a new TV show and you're not allowed to say anything. So what's going on down in Antarctica that you might see while you're down there that you're not allowed to say anything besides Sir Richard fakes a lot faking another expedition. Now let's talk about some other people who have also gone north south circumnavigation and see if they match the flat model or the globe model. This is the owner of the current record for a single plane being flown north south pole circumnavigation. You can look up ZQ pilot. Uh, let's take a look at his path. You'll see here the white path was the intended path the red path is his actual path. So he went down to the tip of South America, bounced out to the 90 degree marker, and then turned around and went right back where he came from, then jumped from South America all the way to Australia, Australia to uh, Hawaii, to California, to Alaska, to the North Pole, back home to North Carolina, 
and he has the record for circumnavigation. Did he circumnavigate? Hmm. I don't think so, Tim. All right, now we're looking at a helicopter named Polar First as they attempted their record-setting helicopter flight pole-to-pole circumnavigation on December 5th, 2006, but they got down to the South Pole and crashed their helicopter. So in 2007, they attempted it again, and this time they did it according to the rules and regulations, not according to me, because what they did is went down to the South Pole, touched the 90-degree marker, and it says here they retraced their steps north with a stop at their 2003 crash site. They then crossed to the Drake and then to Ushuaia. Then they continued through South America. Then they went up the west coast of the U.S. with stops in Alaska and Canada, reaching the North Pole on 20th of April via Eureka. And from there, they headed south, retracing the northern part of the route and then hitting the east coast, Montreal, then New York. So if you can't see what's going on here, we have basically no circumnavigations north-south The ones that we do have are like liners, or I don't know if you remember in gym having to do suicides or whatever they were called. That's basically what they're doing. They're running to the pole, touching it, and coming right back. That is not circumnavigation. It makes no sense on a globe. Do we only fly planes to London and then they have to come right back? They're not allowed to go past that? Of course not, right? Exactly. Now, this is what we need you to do. We need to see somebody circumnavigate the globe north to south. And I'm sorry, but this doesn't count. This isn't real circumnavigation. If you're going to do this, then we'll just say, okay, you haven't proved anything. We could do the same thing on the circle. No, you need to do pole to pole going all the way around your beloved 25,000 mile circumference ball and log it. In fact, you know what I'm going to do right here? I'm going to issue a public challenge. I hear people all the time saying to flat earthers, oh, if it's really flat, go, you know, take a picture of the edge. We dare you, you know, go down to Antarctica, take a picture of the ice wall, take a picture of the firmament touching the ground or what have you. Well, first of all, the vast majority, if not all of us in this research community are just above broke. You know, some may be doing better than others, but We don't have the finances, the time, the resources, the ability to do what's necessary. But an organization like NASA that has, what, $50 million a day to spend of our tax money, they can afford to do a test or any number of these other billionaires out there that have plenty of money. Or I mean, all of the resources and money are in the globe camp. They have all the money. Contrary to popular, you know, internet uninformed critics, flat earthers are not independently wealthy and nobody's getting rich off of this topic. But there are plenty of people who believe in the globe that have lots and lots and lots of money. So somebody needs to take us up on this challenge. If you're going to challenge us, we'll challenge you. You guys actually have the resources. All right. This is what you need to do. I would suggest you start maybe in some place like Pittsburgh. Why Pittsburgh? Well, because it's on the 80th meridian, the 80th longitudinal line, you know, and that's a perfect line to do this test on. Why? Because there's an awful lot of land mass for a plane to fly over, you know, so if you get into trouble, you have no problem. So what you need to do is fly south from Pittsburgh on the 80th meridian, go right over the South Pole, come right by Indonesia, you know, come all the way up, fly over the North Pole and land again on the 80th Meridian in Pittsburgh. Stay on the 80th Meridian the entire time. Log the flight flying over all of the regions we just saw, document it, and you need to do so logging as close to 25,000 miles as possible. Now, I understand that you will be flying up above the Earth, so that would expand, if you will, the circumference. You know, so if you're on the Earth, the circumference of the ball is something like 25, is just shy of 25,000 miles. So if you're above the Earth, it's going to be a little bit more than that. So you need to be somewhere between 25,000 and, let's say, I don't know, 35 to 40,000 at the most miles being logged. Not 100,000, not 60,000, not 50,000, less than 40,000 because that's how big your beloved ball is. So I've already done a little bit of the work for you. I figured out a good path. Maybe there's a better one than that, but you know, the 80th Meridian looks like 
it would be a good one and there's an airport right on it. So, you know, and, and we have the ability now to do in-flight refueling. So that's not really an issue. And there's plenty of land mass along the journey that you could ditch the plane if you had to, if you had some kind of problem, you could land, circumnavigate right over the South Pole, back up under the ball, over the top of the North Pole, and come back down. That's our challenge to you. Until then, circumnavigation just simply is not a proof that we live on a globe. <laughs>